everyone it's Vanessa today I wanted to share some of the books that I've read since the last time I did a little wrap-up and then some of the books that I'm thinking as possibilities for August reading according to Goodreads I've read quite a bit since the last time I like properly wrapped up I haven't been as much in the mood to dive deep into the books that I've been reading and like really wrap them up so these are just general <laughs> general reactions that I had to these books the first one since the last time I wrapped up is We Keep the Dead Close by Becky Cooper it's a true crime book that looks into Harvard and this murder that happened there the author is kind of trying to track down who did it I did a whole video about storytelling and how the storyteller really impacts the story and I think Becky Cooper has a really large role in this book. Overall I liked it. I thought it was way too long though. We were taken in lots of different directions to meet the story and I think I felt bogged down and then when the final reveal happened I felt let down. This is a real story. This happened in real life and it's not gonna end in movie fashion but I still felt a little disappointed reading this at times and I ended up giving it three and a half stars. After that I read Heartstopper Volume 3 which I already gave back to the library because there's a big wait list for that one. I really enjoyed it. It was really light and fluffy. It was exactly what I was looking for. It's a great summer pick me up and in this one Charlie is dealing with an eating disorder or his eating disorder and I thought that was really interesting from the point of view of a young man. I will say I think that these are good but I don't think that every time that I read a new one that they get better in the way that maybe I thought Fence got better as I read more volumes. Maybe I'll wait when the next one comes out, I won't read it right away. Another cute graphic novel, this one's for kids and it's Picasso. It's about a young girl named Jo who is having some home life issues um, with her father not really being there. It's also about this lie that kind of snowballs, something that happens a lot in middle grade. She sees this dog kind of on the street and the dog picks up food for its owners and so Jo starts to pretend that it's her dog. Then it's her trying to keep this lie from unraveling and then finding resolution from that. There's a lot in here about like mob putting yourself into groups. It was like a good parable to like how politics is these days. It was a cute book and I gave it three stars. After that I read I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. I've heard so many things about this book over the years and it's always been on my mind that I wanted to read it. I didn't realize that this book was set kind of in a snowstorm like that's where the climax of the story happens. This book is supposed to be creepy and then there's kind of like a reveal at the end of the story that changes changes a lot of what you witnessed throughout the story and I didn't love the payoff of the end of it but there were some moments in here that were pretty like spooky and creepy the audio narration of it was pretty good in that sense I ended up giving I'm thinking of ending things three stars another one that I've already returned because I had the whole list and it's Nomadland this is the one that we listened to on the road trip it was a fantastic audiobook there was humor to it just like the movie had humor to it and it was fascinating to see kind of like the the real people that are in the movie seeing the lifestyle and the idea behind camper life, how they talk about Amazon and working for camper force. Something that I didn't really understand um, before I read this book is how many people are over 65 that are starting to live this lifestyle because of how difficult it is to save money for retirement and to continue to have a stable roof over your head. I feel inspired a little bit of like, yeah, like, screw regular capitalist society and I'll just go live in an RV. But at the same time, they still have to exist in the society so they are working for Amazon to try to get by. I found that one really really insightful and very very narrative driven so if you like that in your nonfiction, um, it's one that I totally recommend. After that I read another book that I really enjoyed and that was Watch Over Me. This similar to I'm thinking of ending things something happens in the story where it changes the meaning of a lot of things. There are ghosts in this book that are like visible to people and it's totally normal that they are and a lot of the times when that happens in books I don't like it. It takes me out of the realistic setting and for some reason it felt totally normal in this book to me that this was actually happening. So there are some like fabulous elements that I really enjoyed about that. I also loved the setting of this and I also loved the characters. I loved the main character starting to understand herself and this is a great book for people 
people who are trying to read new adult because she is like 19 20 i thought that it had mature elements that are good for that age group um and i also just loved the story of it as well i wish this book was around when i was that age 10 years ago i ended up giving watch over me four stars um after that i read plunder which is another one that i mentioned in my previous video and this is a memoir um and we are going to poland and we are tracking nazi treasure as well as trying to get back a family property this was a really insightful one into family traditions and memory and storytelling just in the same way that um we keep the dead close was as well and that's why i thought that they really paired well together and they both reminded me of each other i think that this had more of a punch in the end that i thought that it ended really well and that i also didn't feel like i was told different things that then didn't matter at the end unlike we keep the dead close so i quite enjoyed this one and i gave this one four stars just two more books okay i read the kingdom of back after plunder and this is by marie lu this is a young adult fantasy it's a historical fiction as well and it was set in austria and then they travel a lot to france and germany and all around europe traveling and playing music it's taking inspiration from mozart and his sister who were real people that played music but we don't really know a lot about mozart's sister obviously lost to time thinking about like girls rights in that time and what girls were allowed to do it really uses that to shine a light on the sister obviously taking inspiration from that and like making a fictional story about it. it has a lot to do with family and the ways that this family is being pulled in different directions to try to make money and to try to elevate themselves in society and also this girl trying to discover herself and wanting people to hear her because she feels like a lot of the times it's either like their package of two or they only really care about her brother they don't really care about her the fantasy elements of this were really interesting to me at the beginning and then i think as i read more and more they became more tedious and not as interesting because it always seemed very clear that the person who was fantastical and coming into their lives was just a villain and it was not a very three-dimensional villain in my opinion. I did end up recommending it for our librarians list for kids who are older, you know, sixth to eighth graders who are maybe reading at a higher level and are okay with stepping into young adults. But again, this is like super clean young adult too. So that's something that we always look for, what to recommend sixth to eighth graders and i gave it three stars and last but not least i read a book that i left at work so it's not here with me and that's victim f from crime victims to suspects to survivors this book i really really enjoyed it got me out of a slump honestly on my goodreads it says that i finished reading the kingdom of back on july 15th and then I didn't pick up anything again until July 30th and then I finished Victim F on August 3rd so it only took me like three or four days to finish. I wasn't really reading much and this book really got me out of that. This is a story that is real. It happened in California in 2015 and it's about a couple. They had kind of like a home invasion and then they took the girlfriend and the police didn't believe the boyfriend. It became this whole thing where the police were telling them this was a hoax and they were trying to make it be like it was Gone Girl. It was about this couple trying to to reclaim back their lives facing trauma that they really dealt with because of the situation and then finally putting the person who did this behind bars though apparently there were more people involved and they still don't know who it is and there is some like entanglement because it wasn't supposed to happen to Denise Huskins it was supposed to happen to the boyfriend's ex-fiance it gets even more complicated because the people that are trying to solve this case are connected to the boyfriend's ex-fiance's person that she had an affair with like she had an affair with a cop it gets really tricky i love that this book was told in first person which made it very accessible i really really enjoyed this book and i would recommend it to people who liked a false report by t christian miller and ken armstrong one of my favorite books ever it's definitely very similar in that the people who are victims um, end up being kind of flipped and basically are suspects in their own the crime that happened to them and then it's them dealing with that and like rising above and trying to get justice for themselves definitely something that i enjoy reading when it comes to true crime is seeing how people have dealt with situations where the police didn't really do much to help them. I gave victim F four stars. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the books that I'm thinking about in August. This is not a set list because I feel like this entire year I've been very like wishy-washy about what I want to read and I'll check out a bunch of things from the library and they'll stay at my house and then they'll become due and then either people have holds on them and then I return them or I'll keep them for like a long time and I'll just keep renewing them and then I'm like no I actually don't want to read this anymore and then I just return them anyway. So I have felt 
world kind of like I'm not sure what it is that I want to read it's not the same as years prior where I felt like I've kept very detailed lists and every month I'm really trying to focus on those lists and trying to knock down the TBR that I set myself for each month kind of all over the place this year I don't know my readings kind of been Lots of different places. First, let's talk about the book that I'm currently reading. I'm currently reading The Groundbreaking, an American City and its Search for Justice. This is by Scott Ellsworth, and I'm listening to this on audiobook. I just came back from my walk. I'm really enjoying it so far. It is a history of the Tulsa Race Massacre. It's told from the perspective of, like, being there, so, like, in the 1920s. The author is a historian, which I am enjoying, and he's making a point to talk about, like, how he's doing this as a historian and not, like, as a um, sensational view of what happened in Tulsa in 1921. This is one of many books that have come out in the past year or so to uh, commemorate the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre. It's one that I saw on a magazine somewhere and I was like, oh, that sounds really interesting and I'm enjoying it so far. So we'll see what I think. I also have um, a couple other nonfiction books. I have The Man Who Hated Women, Sex Censorship, and Civil Liberties in the Gilded Age. I looked at this cover and it really like pulled me in. This is by Amy Son. And then I looked inside and it was talking about Anthony Comstock of the Comstock Laws. He helped pass this one law in the late 1800s that basically said that you couldn't send contraception through the mail. Penalized the mailing of contraceptives and obscene materials with steep fines and long sentences. There were eight women who were charged with violating this law. They supported contraception, sexual education, gender equality, and women's right to pleasure. It says that this book tells the overlooked story of their valiant attempts to fight Comstock in court and in the press. The sad part about this is, guess what? It is only an Audible exclusive, so I can't listen to to the audiobook and it makes me really upset so it might be one of those books that i like many i've mentioned uh, i just keep in my house and i keep renewing but it is a shorter book 300 pages and then the last like 100 pages are all notes Woo. Another nonfiction book that I have is Punch Me Up to the Gods. This is a memoir. I've seen this cover a lot and I don't know, it just looks like something I would like, a memoir that I would like. I get this vibe that it's going to be possibly, hopefully, similar to Saeed Jones memoir that I loved at the beginning of last year and I haven't read like a really touching family memoir coming of age story in a while that has really like impacted me so I'm hoping that I like this. Also update on two videos ago I mentioned that I was gonna read Lee Tran's memoir House of Sticks and I got maybe an hour and a half into it and I wasn't really into it. Sometimes when I'm reading memoirs and they really focus on the early early life of the author I like don't really care about what their lives were like when they were three to five years old because it's all like things that they don't truly remember and so I set it down but I don't know we'll see what I think about this memoir I have a graphic nonfiction graphic memoir and that is how to be ace by Rebecca Burgess I thought this was for kids and I don't think it is I think it's for adults this is what it looks like on the inside and I recently read, I think it's just called Ace. I really enjoyed it and I felt like I learned a lot about asexuality. So now I'm excited to read a graphic memoir of it. If you can believe it, I still have Blackout checked out. And I listened to maybe the first one and a half stories but I haven't really sat down and focused on it. This is kind of a book that I feel like I need to read the words as I'm listening to the audio. I don't know why. A lot of the times what happens with audiobooks is I need to focus in the first hour and so if I read the book and listen at the same time, maybe the first hour of the audiobook, then after that I feel like everything lines up well and I can just listen to the audiobook without reading the words. Well, I have a bunch of graphic novels. So I have Clash. This is the fourth book that's come up by Kayla Miller following Olive. And I'm excited. I literally don't really know what's going on in this one. Maybe a friend of me or like somebody that she's having issues with. I just really enjoy this series and I think it's cute. I think it's light and I also think that the the plot of these books are really interesting. Sometimes I feel like middle grade graphic novels you really like the characters but don't really care for the plot and the last one that I read in this series was about boating and I, I thought that it was really well done. The plot of it was really well done so we'll see what I think of Clash. I also have The Witch Boy which I have read before by Molly Knox Ostertag. I'm going to read this for my graphic novel book club in October so I have to read it again and come up with some questions and and I think we're gonna do maybe some Halloween crafts. So I'm excited for this one. I haven't read it in maybe two years. We have Mika Song's follow-up book to Donut 
feed the squirrels and this is apple of my pie i just love her illustrations i think all her stuff is so cute and lighthearted and humorous it's like something very juvenile but something that really just warms my heart i don't know i also have nidhi chanani's new graphic novel for kids and that's jukebox um i actually have never read pashmina which is the other one that she's written but i've heard good things about this from co-workers and i think it has to do with time travel and a jukebox and I think that sounds really fun so I'm hoping that I really enjoy it. I have one middle grade book and that's Summer at Meadow Wood by Amy Rebecca Tan. I had no idea Amy Rebecca Tan wrote another book after A Kind of Paradise which was one of my favorite middle grade books that I read last year so I'm really excited about this. I think it has to do with summer camp probably should read it before fall, right? I found out about this because of Krista from Books and Jams. Two that I showed you a couple videos ago that I still have are Infinite Country and We Run the Tides, so we'll see. These are kind of there on my list. And then I also have a more um, lighthearted mystery, adult mystery, and that's Arsenic and Adobo. And this sounds really fun. It says her ex-boyfriend drops dead moments after a confrontation with her. Her life quickly swerves from a Nora Ephron romp to an Agatha Christie case. Trying to figure out what happened so that she's not the suspect. I'm in the mood for something soft like this, so, and a mystery. I just hope that it's not so cozy that I feel like it's hard to believe. I don't know, we'll see. The last thing that I really want to get to soon is Sally Rooney's Beautiful World, Where Are You? The audiobook came out on Libra FM as an ALC this month, and it's really exciting, and it's narrated by one of my favorite narrators who did Normal People, who did The Guest List, which I really enjoyed, and who also did Exciting Times um, by Nisha Dolan, which I also really enjoyed the audiobook of. So I love when your favorite narrators are narrating the books that you're really anticipating anyway. A lot of stuff is happening at work, and and we'll see. I feel like we're ramping up to be normal again, but the Delta variant is kind of like everywhere. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.